Lots of times I hear people that want to go into ministry tell me about what they're doing as being in the ministry. And sometimes I wonder what kind of ministry are they doing? I mean, it seems like what God said to us was go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, to go and make disciples of all nations, to go and teach, to go and share Jesus. And yet, a lot of times I see people going out to maybe confront issues rather than confront the reality of having a walk with God, having a talk with God, having to deal with God on a daily basis. And what I mean by that is that, you know, life is where you are at. It's what you live. So if you're a Christian, your life should be the witness that you are. You are influenced by what God wants you to do in your life as you live it. He should be the overriding factor in your decision-making process. He should be the impetus that causes you to do certain things in a certain way that you won't break a law. You won't go out of your way to use your liberty, your freedom, because you've been forgiven, to do things that might influence others to do things wrongly. That maybe you're forgiven because you're a Christian that if they do it, they're condemned because they're not a Christian. So you see, there's a lot of things that are lawful to me, but not all things are expedient. And so sometimes, if you're in the ministry, it would be better if you appeared to seek to do those things that are more excellent, as Paul said, that, yeah, maybe you, can, maybe you could do this or that or the other thing. Maybe love might be more of a motivation to give to those who need that more so than those who maybe you disagree with. You know, and getting in someone's face isn't necessarily the best place to be when it comes to demonstrating the love of God for the entire world. Because we want rather a person to seek out the Lord. We want them to find Jesus on their own. They don't have to be like we are. They don't have to come, you know, as we did, either <laughs> however you came, you know, crawling on your knees, flat on your face, or standing up and shouting, you know, to the heavens. It doesn't matter so much so that they have to follow your prescribed way of doing things as long as they come to Jesus as they are. And Jesus meets with them where they're at. And together they find that salvation that God has provided for every single human being that lives and has ever lived if they have called upon the name of the Lord to be saved and they have given their life to God to be an example of what God can do when he invades a life, when he lives inside of a person, when he chooses to remake that person into the image of his son. So it's really not about, you know, your ministry or mine or how we're doing things, but sometimes it's more about letting God do what he wants to do with a person and letting them do it their way. I know that in my day, you know, I go about doing a lot of work on the internet and sometimes it's, it's not all glorious work. Sometimes I tell people about viruses or about computer work or about hacking or about things that don't have a whole lot of important direct connection to God, but it's an example of sharing and caring about someone who might be learning things for the first time and not know how to do things. Like in preparing these videos, you know, it's giving people the realization that you don't have to be a professional to share or to care or to be a videographer to give out your faith on a camera to someone else or to make a video record for your children's children or your children or your loved ones that maybe you can't talk to them in the way that you want to but you could relate to them in a way that making a video you can you know sometimes it's not about 
you know, all the glorious things, but it might just be about the simple things that you're doing. Sometimes just saying hi. Sometimes just day by day by day saying God bless you, or maybe not even saying anything religious at all. Maybe God's just using what people are watching you as to be the example of a person who just is consistent and has the peace of God each and every day of their life. In my utmost, still human, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. The great marvel of the Incarnation slips into the ordinary childhood's life. The great marvel of the Transfiguration vanishes in the devil-possessed valley. The glory of the Resurrection descends into a breakfast on the seashore. This is not an anticlimactic, but a great revelation of God himself. The tendency is to look for those great miracles, those marvelous expectations, those things that are wondrous in our experience, and we mistake the sense of the heroic for being heroes. It is one thing to go through a crisis in magnificent manner, but another thing to go through every day glorifying God when there is no witness, no limelight, and no one paying the remotest attention to us. If we do not do what we should do when no one's watching, how will we do what we should be doing when they are watching? If we do not want medieval halos, we want something that will make people say, what a wonderful man of prayer he is, what a pious, devoted woman she is. If you are rightly devoted to the Lord Jesus, you have reached the sublime height where no one will ever think of noticing you, but all that is noticed is the power of God that comes through you all the time. That it is no longer anyone thinking that you're something special, but that God is working through you to create, <laughs> to create something special around you to all those that see and know that there's no way that anyone else could have done it except that God did it. And it's obvious by those things of not being so consumed by setting them up, but allowing them to happen in God's time, in His will, and His way. Oh, I have had a wonderful call from God. It takes Almighty God incarnate in us to do the meanest duty to the glory of God, the things that aren't, quote unquote, the spiritual giftings, the spiritual aspects that we think are so important that God doesn't treat us number one. And as a matter of fact, your reaction of love, he says, is more important than your action of demonstrating some gift of the Spirit. It takes God's Spirit in us to make us so absolutely humanly and hum and caring about humanity in such a way that we become unnoticeable, but rather what we have accomplished for that person is more noticed than that with which we think we are. The test of the life is not success, but faithfulness in human life as it actually is lived every single day that we live. We will set up success in Christian work as the aim. The aim is to manifest the glory of God in human life and to live the life hid with Christ in God in human conditions. But our human relationships are the actual conditions in which the ideal life of God is to be exhibited. It is in those relationships that you have, those day-to-day -day connections where you make a connection with another person and you come into contact that at that moment you are revealed as one of his disciples and that you have love for one another or you are concealed from the fact that you are not as you ought to be but rather you're what you think you should be and practicing some religious idea better to be found as one who is loved than to be lost in someone who is always preaching and teaching a righteousness they do not live 